Hey guys, I'm Nick and today I want to show you the easiest possible way to create abstract looking flowers in Houdini. This setup allows you to create semi-static flowers and I have created these realistic looking animated flowers. There are five Alembics that you can get from my website and my Gumroad. For this one, I have also created a pack of five static Alembic flowers and also you can purchase the asset pack or you can purchase the heap file. As always, huge thanks to everyone who is supporting me and purchasing my project files and asset packs. Your support allows me to dedicate more time to create these tutorials and asset packs, so thank you once again. And you might already notice that we are doing this on macOS. And I will show you how fast or how slow, actually, the base model of MacBook Air is. And let me know in the comments if you want me to record a separate video where we check how Pyro simulations, Vellum simulations, Pop Networks actually work on this MacBook. Also, I will show you how I use my main machine, my Windows machine, to render out these flowers. Alright, so enough intro, let's get into Houdini. And I created here three variations and I will show you how each of them differs. So this version one is the most basic thing that we can do. So we start with a circle. Uh, here you can see it's a circle, primitive type set to polygon, um, division set to 200, which is pretty, pretty high value. But yeah, anyways, we want this circle to be as smooth as possible. So here I remeshed it. So then we definitely need a UV unwrap. So then magic part starts with a copy and transform node. And here you can see that I'm copying seven layers or seven disks. I make them kind of in, in this way. So translate by Z axis is set to minus 0 0.147. And I'm rotating each copy 30, 30 degrees. This is not that necessary for this V1, but I will explain why I'm doing this rotation in the versions we will be checking out later. And also I'm scaling down it. The uniform scale is set to 0.9. You can make as many copies as you want. Uh, it will just make the, the, the thing looking more interesting. So now we have the Vellum set up and what we need to drop we need the Vellum constraints set to class, and uh, basically here is everything's default. The bend, bend stiffness is set to this value, which is uh, 0 0.501, and also rest angle scale is set to 1.5, which allows this clause to bend actually kind of even more, which, which borders with some artifacts, but actually and gives us even more organic look. So then we drop a Vellum Solver. I have removed the gravity, gravity is set to zero, and constraint durations is set to 200. You can experiment with this and maybe place a few more sub-steps if you have more layers or more forces. Oh, and I forgot, we actually need a sphere. And let me show you, this sphere is primitive type set to polygon and uniform scale is set to 0.3 and frequency set to 4. And the thing is, we need to animate this sphere and it will make our shape of our flower because it will kind of like push all the disks together, one in another. And here you can see that I have a keyframe at one, a keyframing Z position on the sphere. And basically we go, we go, we go, we go. I think at the frame 120, I got another keyframe, but basically we just need only these 100 frames for, for now. And you can experiment with the speed of that ball, because if you, let's say, set it to be four seconds and at frame 48, let's say it will be already like somewhere, somewhere here, it will make another another shape which will be different so now we go into the vellum solver we enable it of course uh, let me turn back in the vellum solver we have pop wind and pop wind basically makes our shapes not that uniform let me quickly disable these two and i will show you and by the way this is the real-time playback from my base model macbook air you see it's not that fast but actually, it's not that small amount of polygons here because we have seven layers, all of them are remeshed. 
But here you can kind of see what's what's going on there and the flower kind of like flower looking shape is forming. So let me just skip to the frame 96 right now. So here you can see uh, what that that ball thingy thingy does. And when I'm talking about like flower shaped things, I mean something like this frame 84. And this is without any turbulence and wind. And of course this is not so realistic and also not that interesting in terms of let's say abstract flowers so let me enable this first pop wind and here you can see that I have amplitude set to 0.4 swirl size set to 0.2 roughness set to 8 turbulence set to 6 and offset this is dollar t dollar time so the noise of the wind changes every second I also have another wind and this is said to be active only when we have the frame number greater than 90 and it just pushes our flower away to this side to this negative z or actually positive z and what it makes and what it gives us it kind of like opens the flower a bit because we have this ball and when we have the flower completely closed and we push that to z we have the ball kind of like come out and also open the flower just a bit. So let me show you how it looks. So we probably want to simulate a bit more than 100 frames, but I think I will be getting these at frame, let's say, 83. And we have this kind of like flower looking shape. So obviously we need proper normals and we might want to subdivide it. So here uh, we can skip this file cache because we have already rendered it. And here we can add a Vellum post-process node and blur it a bit, subdivide and extrude by thickness. And I definitely don't want 0.1, I want 0.05, I think. So let's see how it is. Now this looks much better. We have all these thingies inside and yeah, that, that looks cool. But still, this is your super basic absolutely super basic flower and we want something more interesting and more organic perhaps so let's take a look at the v2 so this is our flower v2 and it already looks better than our first iteration and here what we are doing we are adding some sort of first of all we need to set up our circle it's the same circle we used before here we have the attribute triangle and in attribute triangle i set the normals to be equal to the position for example if i enable the normals you can see that their direction is basically z axis and if i check this attribute triangle you can see that normals are going kind of like outside of the points we have so now we can drop a mountain node and we will get this kind of like deformation only on the y and x axis and not on the z. Here I just played with these settings and you can obviously also play with them and make, I don't know, many, many crazy shapes here. If you, are get, if you are getting these artifacts here, you just need to increase the divisions of the circle, by the way. So let's set it to be 41 and 45. Also, yeah, you can play with a fractal here and then you remesh it and again you remesh it once and remesh it second time and you have this pretty dense mesh and then you uv unwrap that as we did before and then you copy and here you can see that when we copy we are rotating it and that's how we are altering these um kind of like battle shapes so same thing we have our sphere we have our vellum claws set up then we have our vellum solver and a vellum solver same setup for the wind, just a bit different parameters for the amplitude and swirl size. And then, yeah, I catch the doubt, so it looks like this. We have the initial noise, break the uniformity of the, of the leaves, and then you kind of like wrap them. So I would say frame 60, 78, yeah, it looks good. Then the same thing, volume post process, and then I add normals. This, this one looks pretty cool to me. If you don't want a procedural approach where we have our shape controlled by the mountain node, you can always draw your own. So here is this ugly, ugly thingy, and I'll show you what, what it is. 
So you can drop a curve node, or actually you don't you don't need to drop a curve node, you need to just click this one curve, and then you can tap three on your keyboard, and you will be able to draw these these shapes. So here you can see that I'm really bad at drawing curves. So basically what I have done, I yeah, draw this uh, this flower kind of like shape or something, and uh, then you can also skip this part and just remesh it twice and then do all the things we already done. But for this one, I want to show you that you also can resample it and make it like a bit denser. And then you can drop that same attribute triangle and assign normals to be same as position. And then you can also do a mountain node here, so to displace the, the leaves. And then you do this remesh trick and then maybe an attribute blur, uh, mode is set to volume preserving and unchecked pin border points, which makes these leaves just a little bit more organic. So that's without attribute blur, and this is with, that, with the attribute blur. So also you can wrap copy for this one, I have actually copied it nine times. So here I have the file cache. Um, for the Vellum Solver, again, everything is the same, just updated the, the pop wind. Yeah, we basically have our, our flower. For this one, you might need to update the, the Vellum Gloss um, band ratio here to be a little bit stiffer because we don't have that much of a like a center geometry where the leaves are attached. But anyways, I think at the frame 72 or something, yeah, it looks it looks pretty good. You can always rotate it in your composition. Even like frame 67 looks good. And here we also drop a volume post process. So this one is a pretty dense mesh here. And if you want to use many of these, you either need to use an instancer or something. Or after this, you also should drop a remesh node. And you can here, let me show it here. Um, you can get the edge lens to be adaptive, have all the details we have here but for example let me find here where we don't need much of the polygons it will decrease the 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 count of the polygon there now what you need to do is just attach an rop alembic node and export this this one frame or you can actually export i don't know some sort of animation maybe but yeah for me it's just uh, just one frame I don't have Redshift or actually Cinema 4D or Octane installed here on this, this Mac, but I genuinely think that rendering on base level M1, not M1 Max or M1 Pro, is anywhere a good idea. So I'm using Parsec, which is free to access my laptop, and here we have a few flowers in Cinema 4D. I think this one was the generic one. For the lights, I have just two lights, one from the side and one from the top. Of course, tweak the camera settings just a bit. This is just a black background uh, for now. And here, yeah, we have this, this basic flower. Then we have our a bit updated flower. And of course, let's add our third flower that we did just, just right now. Um, let's rotate it just a bit. Maybe I don't want it. So let's make it a V3. Let's drop it on it. I think it's especially if you are not using close-ups that much and you just scatter them, they look pretty, pretty good. Of course, these flowers are abstract and they don't pretend to be like 100% real, but I think they look quite nice. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed my tutorial and remember that you can get the project files or five Alembic flower pack. Links are in the description. I will be back very soon. Bye.